around you. Paul, near the end of his life, said, I have fought the good fight of faith in 2 Timothy. And he exhorted Timothy to fight the good fight of faith. And he said, suffer hardship with me and be a good soldier of Christ Jesus. My dear people, the time is coming and you've got to get a hold of this. I just want to cry sometimes. We have got to get off the milk and get onto the meat. And I know how easy it is to sit there. I've sat there. I sat there for a number of years in my little three-piece suit as I, when I was a businessman. I was praying the, the tonight in the office. I prayed before every meeting for the wisdom of God. And you know, as Americans, we've always thought, well, and we our teachings. I'm a man of faith. I'm righteous. Nothing can hurt me, right? <clears throat> Is that right? Nothing can hurt me, right? Do you think the first and second and third century Christians were righteous? Do you think they knew how to pray? You know what happened to most of them? They were boiled alive. The skin was peeled off of them. They were slid down razor blades, blades. They were fed to lions. It's called persecution. And I've said this before, this thing with Jim Baker, they went after Jim Baker. They're after you. They're after me. It's rampant. Wake up. Jesus is in the garden. He's saying, wake up before it's too late. Wake up. Put that flesh under subjection and start getting on your knees and pray. Jesus said, my burden is light. But your flesh is going to fight you for a little while until your spirit man takes over. And when your spirit man takes over, then it's easy. It's much easier to pray in the spirit an hour a day and commune with God than it is to fight the devil for 24 it's so much easier. Hallelujah. Where's that here? Now, <clears throat> praise God. God has given us, the body of Christ, mighty weapons. With which to fight in the spiritual conflict. And these weapons represent our role in the fight. You see, whenever we are engaged in a battle with the adversary, who is the adversary? Satan. God is there to ensure our victory. We always win. You've already won. But he don't, the, the devil don't know it. That's the problem. He keeps coming at you. He's trying to take out all he can take out while he can. You see, but we, we, we mustn't suppose that the wonderful fact that we have, n that, 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 that we don't have anything to fight. Just because we, are, we know we have the victory. We are responsible to take the weapons God has given us and use them as he instructed us. You see, if you look at the, the uh, book of Joshua, and it talks about the children of God, and they conquered the promised land, but they still had to take up arms. But, and, and, and the word says God was with them, but they still had to take up arms, didn't they? And they had to do battle with the enemy. And the same is true today. God has promised to be our victor, but we must do our part in using the spiritual uh, weapons that he's given to us. As we do, what was true of Israel's adversaries will be true of our spiritual adversaries. Do you know the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament? Other than the covenant, we have New Covenant, okay, and everything else. But you see, the Old Testament, the Old uh, Testament, was flesh versus flesh. 
was flesh versus flesh in the war. In the New Testament, it's spirit versus spirit in the war. And these mighty weapons that God has given to us have to be yielded in prayer. It's in the arena of prayer that we do combat with the spiritual forces that are arrayed against us. The Apostle Paul described the armor which God has given us in Ephesians um, chapter 6, beginning in verse 11. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 11. <clears throat> I'll read this in the Amplified. Put on God's whole armor. The army, the armor, that was, put on God's whole armor. The armor of a heavy armed soldier. Heavy armed soldier. Which God supplies that you may be able to successively stand up against all the strategies and deceits of the devil. First of all, it says there that you will be able to stand up. In other words, if you don't have it on your armor, you're not going to stand up. You're going to fall down. Secondly, it says the strategies and deceits of the devil. My dear people, the enemy has strategies. He's thousands of years old. And he'll plant a strategy. And it may take him 12, 20 years to find that crack that you've left open. But when you get between a rock and a hard, hard place, he'll find the crack. I've seen him do it. He has strategies. And his deceits, he's deceitful. You see, for we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the depositions, the depos whatever, against the powers, against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere, against the master spirits. Do you want to be successful in the kingdom of God? Become a master in the spirit. Become a master in the spirit. The world rulers of this present darkness against the spirit forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural realm. I think maybe we better learn to, to speak in the heavenly and supernatural language, don't you? Therefore, put on God's complete armor armor. He didn't say put on a piece of it, just your helmet of salvation. Most Christians today, that's all they got on. Their helmet of salvation. Oh, I'm sorry, they had their breastplate of righteousness. They're walking around and they're not drawing out their sword. Therefore, put on God's complete armor that you will be able to, what? Resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger and having done all that crisis demands to stand firmly in your place. To stand. Stand there, hold your ground. Why would it say hold your ground? The whole Bible is about your ground, your land. That Your land or your ground is your family. It's your business. It's your church. It's your parents. It's your grandparents. It's everything about you. That's your ground. That's your land. So stand, therefore, hold your ground, having tightened the belt of truth about your loins and having put on the breastplate of integrity and righteousness and of the moral rectitude and right standing with God. And having shod your feet in preparation to face the enemy with the firm-footed stability, the promptness and the readiness produced by the good news of the gospel of peace, lift up over all the covering shield of saving faith upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one. 
In other words, your shield of faith. How does your shield of faith work? Well, first of all, the enemy uses these, what, they call, what the Bible calls fiery darts, or like little missiles. So you got your shield of faith. You... See? 